I read that article too. The one about the guppies. On like pop size or no, I think it was Science know. Daily. But when you say that it, I think it was commenting on the intelligence of the shy guppies. And the shyness being an, an evolutionary mechanism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. There was something about how in the fish, in the aquarium, the more aggressive guppies actually did better. Because, like, they would drop food in, and then some guppies would just go towards it, and other guppies would, like, back off. But then in nature, the guppies that backed off actually tended to live longer and get bigger. Yeah. Do you have any dialogues? about this with a geneticist or with a scientist? About the genetic modification? Everything that you've been talking about. So so I actually interviewed George Church, who's uh -huh. like really freaking Tell cool. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> George Church is a, a biologist at Harvard, and he has like a really crazy lab where he does all kinds of things. I mean, it was so bizarre. I, I didn't even expect him to agree to talk to me, so I wasn't really like totally I was like surprised at how cool he was. Actually, Joe Davis is doing a residency in like the lab next to his or something. Joe Davis is a pioneer artist who works with uh, biotech. He's probably the first one that started being in the lab as his studio. He's in his 60s now, something like that. So crazy. Really wild guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so George Church has a number of projects going on. One of them is the Personal Genome Project, I think it's called, where he's trying to get as many people as possible to contribute to an open source database of genomic data. So like, basically you can volunteer to donate some blood and a skin sample, um, but it is going to be published online. And not, not with your name linked to it, with an ID number, but it's, it's pretty easy to, to cross-reference things. Mm -hmm. So. But that's, I think that's a really interesting project uh, because and it just seems, it's hard to imagine what the consequences of making all of your genetic data publicly available will be in the future. Like to make that decision now is, is quite a stab in the dark. Did you donate some? I didn't. I, I still <laughs> kind of, I think I might just do 23andMe. I haven't you done that. You guys know 23andMe? Look it up. Yeah. 23andMe.com. It's dot, dot, dot. You'll figure it out. As a it's disclaimer. definitely worth it. Yeah. Really? You'd rather do that than be in his I just, database? Like, That's honestly, the health insurance situation in this country is so scary. But that's... <laughs> It's That's so a scary. really interesting decision, though. I know. I, well, I haven't made the decision yet. No, but yeah. the interesting thing. Conversation. With yeah. yourself. Well, even he would say, like, honestly, like, contributing to that project doesn't necessarily benefit you as much as it would someone like me. <laughs> oh. Because, but that's because if, if, if he has his entire genome sequenced, he can, he can actually interface with that information. Of course. My data would just be kind of like and laying out And why would there. you think that a corporation that's doing... Would do, yeah, that's a good difference? question. Well, they have a privacy policy, right? Technically. So you're really I, I haven't actually looked at the sort of like, if they the got a subpoena, prince. what would happen? The fine print of using right. your genes. <laughs> to find your ideal mate. 23 and Mute sequence, sequences your entire genome like and sends it back to you. So you have all of your, and they identify certain genes, but just as a disclaimer, they only have, like oh, often the genes are just like rare genetic diseases. So people are often disappointed by their 23 and Me results because there's like not that much that you learn except a bunch of letters and that hopefully you don't have rare genetic diseases. Uh, but you do get to see how closely uh, linked you are to Neanderthals, which is cool. They can use that for passwords and stuff. Prison passwords right now for like internet, internet security. Your genetic information? Yeah, because they're trying to figure out how to, because the passwords are like kind of dying out. Huh. And their effectiveness. So they can, they're trying to figure out how to use like either thumbprints or eyes or um, something more individual. Imagine if you had to copy paste your intention. You know, do copy pasting your entire genetic code is pretty crazy. <laughs> like it's so long. So one gene is like five pages. But trees, of trees are really. more complicated than us. You know that. What are trees? Trees. Oh. They have much more complicated genetic structure than us. Yeah. Certain rats actually have like twice as many chromosomes as we do, Gosh. which is weird. 
It rats. seems like a lot of, yeah, like a big mess. My gardener told me that rats, roaches, and mint will survive nuclear war. <laughs> What's nuclear war? Nuclear oh. war. Mint? Yeah, she can't get rid of mint because it's like weeds. They just keep growing. <laughs> and I thought, that's interesting. I have to make sure that I'm not going to get a parking ticket. <laughs> that's pretty close to the end of our interview. So I think we should be fine. Okay. Any last questions, ideas? By the way, just to remind everybody, this oh, gallery good. is very much... How much time do you have? I have like ten, ten, uh, ten minutes? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, the gallery is envisioned and set up for work in progress. So what you heard Professor Jimszewski talk about, he's never done this before. It was really an experiment for him. And in general, Blanca, who's sitting here, had a show, and it was also the first time she tried something different from just doing photography to go getting into microscopy and trying some other stuff. And we have an open call. so students, faculty, whoever wants to experiment and try something new, we do it here. And that's one of the reasons I invited Megan, because she's always been very curious, but I never saw her really jump into it. So this is a good, as you hear, kind of a first step, and that's why she likes, and she's really inviting your comments and questions to see how you're responding. Because when an artist develops work, you really need that feedback to know what the next step is to, because you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for people who are going to experience what you're trying to relate. Like, I'd just like to say quickly that the questions you're raising are definitely very provocative and relevant, especially to like the time, like the day and age that we are in now. Um, and so like as you're developing this, is there a way that we can like continue to follow your project or like That's something? the best question yeah. ever. <laughs> There's I was a just, compliment. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, I was just thinking like crap, why don't I have a website for this yet? Yeah, really. Actually, yeah, I know. Absolutely. But you know Donny Lou? Mm -hmm. He's coming into town. We yes, already so talked about it. Grab him. He's a really good designer. Um, There's other ways you can do it just quickly. you guys should give me your email addresses and then I'll like somehow I'll put them on I'll put them on okay list. okay yeah yeah good and actually see this is would be the coolest thing I've always that I've always wanted to like have uh, like an online th like basically a website for a project where anyone could dump related material so like if you like not have have anyone you gotta have some kind of filter but or if you want to dump I'm that's fine. Why I can ignore it. <laughs> dump on your stuff? No, no not <laughs> dump like this. Uh, dump like, put like link in. me to things mm -hmm. or like, I, like, <laughs> yeah, put ideas. Well, okay. I see this. This is my suggestion, my okay. response. Um, professor comes out of it. I really see it very much when you do it physically, uh, the acting to be integrated into the video. Mm -hmm. So you actually plan out, okay, this and this actor, these audience members are gonna be part of it, either like just sitting there, or it's almost like hidden. Yeah. So it gives another dimension to the live aspect that you started attempting. Yeah. But online, I think is really critical. And what I would do is episodes. Yeah. I would do small, yeah. like 10 minute episodes and once a month go, ah, oh, there's a new episode of, you know, the yeah. Eureka project. Yeah, yeah. And just keep going. Right. And then you take bits of that and show it live with the actors inside. Yeah. And you could start choreographing and making all kinds of stories that are invented and yeah. m but in real situations. And definitely give context because yeah. I feel like I really miss the context that you described. Mm -hmm. Seeing the trash, seeing the other people. Even if I, I had like 30 seconds of that, not bringing trash I know, here. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. That's like too literal. But okay. like just, even if you gave me one minute of like a scan of the space yeah. with people there, with whatever, and then we walk into, you know, the situation, I would have a completely different sense of that conversation. Yeah. I really felt it was a bit disconnected and that kept thinking where is it and who is he mm -hmm. but not in a way that 
really provoked me to think more like I'm missing that information mm -hmm. to get more of a sense of what what where this context is right right that's my feedback totally <laughs> that's I accept that but yeah. I, I think it's good work. <laughs> it's a good start. And I like that it's very kind of abstract and not trying to teach anybody any genetics. Yeah. And it's kind of real and kind of not. And that's good. It's a really nice. Yeah. And that you're brave enough to go into a place like that. <laughs> I have to say. I had, I had, I, ha well, I have like an inside. Um, you have a person who yeah. brings you in, yeah, you yeah. need something like that. Although I kind of just was, so I never said how I met this guy, and I'll just say because yes. it's kind of funny. Tell us. He, I was, we were like walking back because there was this crazy sandstorm. We were walking back from something, and uh, and there was this dog who was barking, and it was like, and it just like kept doing that, like seriously, the same action, like with its front legs up. And it looked like a freaking robot. And all of a sudden, this guy with this like belly and no shirt, uh, who's him, comes out of his trailer and I was like, oh shit, like, is he gonna get pissed off? I don't know, I don't know what his deal is. And then he kind of like greeted the people I was with and then I asked him if I could film his dog. And he was like, yeah. And that's how I met him. I even never saw the dog. You saw one dog, uh, but, but no, I, did, I didn't. I didn't catch that robot dog. It was so crazy. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> no, but it was too late. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Let's give yeah. it a big applause.